Hey everybody, welcome to Zephyr's Travels. I'm Randy, and in this week's video, we've got something really special. We're here at the Airstream International Rally in Rock Springs, Wyoming, and the keynote speaker was Justin Humphreys from Airstream Incorporated. So he's going to talk about what's going on in the RV industry and actually what's going on in Airstream. So I've split this, his talk into two parts. The first part will be mostly on the RV industry and what's happened since post-COVID because everybody knows when COVID hit, everybody bought an RV. Well, are they still buying RVs or what's happening? So he's going to talk about that. And then stay tuned for the second half um, in a separate video where he talks about Airstream and how Airstream is dealing with the post-COVID uh, RV business. So both great talks, and so first one's coming up now. Second one will be linked up above and uh, at the end of the video. So it is my dear honor to, re to introduce Justin Humphreys, Vice President of Sales, friend, and partner to the club. Good morning. It's so great to see these Airstreams out in the wild. <laughs> we always talk about it at the factory. I wonder where that one's going. Well, they're all going here, apparently. Uh, this is great. Uh, as uh, Mona so kindly introduced me, I'm Justin. And uh, yeah, what a great announcement with, uh, with Eric this morning that Airstream's gonna provide that first year membership to the club. It's a big deal for us. You know, we sell a lot of Airstreams now, so it's not a, it's not a small dollar amount. But what it, it, it's a huge value amount to us. You know, the club has become so important to Airstream, and uh, I know Airstream is important to the club. Um, and you know, when you think about a brand, you really want, when people get in to buying an Airstream, you want, it, you want the brand to be sticky. You want, we want to sell them a second, a third, a fourth. And one great way of doing that is if you go to a club, you enjoy it, and you get friends, and you get this community, that we think it's great for the, the business. And obviously it's great for the club because it keeps members coming in for each of uh, each of your regions and units and everything else. So a uh, huge announcement and thanks to Eric really for all the help in getting that done uh, from his, his side and Lori as well at headquarters. And thank you um, to the entire membership for your support. So I, you know, each year I, I try to come up, give an update, kind of two updates. What's going on in the RV industry? Obviously Airstream is a very small part in a larger industry, so what's going on? There's been a lot of noise lately. And then also kind of just update you on all things Airstream. So with that, I'll get going. So I'm gonna give you a business update um, kind of on the RV industry and then also for Airstream. Talk about some of Airstream's strategic initiatives that we're undergoing right now. Um, Thor Industries this is our parent company. I always like to try to explain that relationship a little better and how we leverage it at Airstream. I'll talk about that a bit. Um, still this new post-COVID buyer, I mean the COVID um, that, that whole pandemic just really changed the RV industry and what we're seeing, some really cool trends. And, uh, you know, this Airstream exclusive store model, I just talked about it with Airstream of Utah and uh, Airstream of Wyoming and how we're expanding that even more. I've got some photos, some really cool um, things coming there as well. And then uh, it, it wouldn't be a, you know, a presentation if marketing didn't put a little sizzle reel together of what's going on in marketing uh, to try to make this thing look a little better. So, uh, so we'll do that. So there's a lot of noise in the RV industry. So what's going on in the RV space? And in 2021, so COVID happens in 2020, um, we're shut, factories are shut down, obviously, all businesses are shut down. And then when we came back, it exploded. Like I, I like to say, we became the toilet paper of the pandemic. <laughs> it was insane how fast RVs were selling. From May 2020 to about August of 2020, our entire dealer inventory was, was sold. And then dealers were like, I need, I need more inventory. We, we can't ramp up that fast. So really 2021, and that was the same for the whole RV industry. In 2021, the RV industry really, really picked up. Now that's a lot different for Airstream. We can't scale like that. Um, a lot of the other RV manufacturers can really produce a lot more. We, we're like the, it, it was kind of the race between the turtle and the hare. We were the turtle. And we're slowly kind of going up, and the RV industry was the hair. They were they took off um, because they can really scale quickly. So in 2021, just to give you an idea, just in total registrations, there were 465,000 units sold in the industry. Uh, it was an all-time record. Uh, Motorhomes were 40,000 registrations. 
So uh, over half a million RVs were sold in 2021. The RV industry is like, man, this is going to be awesome. We're going to, you know, we're going for it. Um, and then in 2022, things leveled out a little bit. And the problem was, is RV manufacturers kept building at that rate. We'll talk about that here in a bit. So in uh, 2022, those registrations were down quite a bit from 2021. But if you, ch if you remove 2021, 2022 is like an all-time record year. So it was still a really good year, but it was less, obviously, than 2021. And then in 2023, things are starting to really normalize in the industry. Now, it's down considerably from 21. I would say it's, it's basically back to the pre-COVID levels, which was a good level. Dealer, dealers were making money, manufacturers were fine, they were healthy, um, but it happens so fast, everybody's adjusting quickly. So uh, one interesting thing is the segment of B vans, which we play in, so the, the converted vans, they continue to rise. They've slowed down a little bit this year, but um, that segment has been growing leaps and bounds. So if you, if you kind of put it on a chart, you can kind of see the 2021 uh, graph here is, is just way up. Now, in 2022, you can see it was still the second best year on record. This last, this projection for this year, it's way, it's way down. And these are projections for shipments. This isn't retails. This is actually wholesale shipments. So why is, why is that happening? I'll try to break it down like this. So 2021, we actually, even though we, sh we retailed over half a million units, we shipped 600,000. So the dealer inventory increased. And then in 2022, we outshipped our retails by about another 50,000. These are kind of round numbers. So the dealer inventory continued to grow and retail started to fall. So something has to give. So because we had outshipped it as an industry, when you kind of filter it all out with 2020 to 2023, um, the industry, basically our de the dealers in the RV industry, this isn't Airstream, were up 100,000 units. So in late 2022, dealer inventories got way too high. So the noise that you hear about if you read the press for the RV industry is dealers had to right size their inventories. It was way too high based on the, you know, the retail rates coming in back and normalizing. So um, basically, the manufacturers had to ship less, dealers had to sell more to get that inventory down. So from about November of last year until February of this year, I would say 90% of RV manufacturers shut down. They didn't build a thing for about four months trying to get that inventory down. I'm happy to say Airstream never shut down, and I'll talk about our, our part of it. Thank you. Um, and I'll, and I'll talk about how we manage it versus kind of what the average um, RV uh, manufacturer did. But, you know, clearly that's pretty disruptive when you're shutting down your factory. So I really think that the shipments are, are much more in line with retail. And by the, by, as we go into fall, that alignment will be pretty, pretty good. We're in the middle of the season right now. Dealers are continuing to um, draw down those inventories across the RV industry. So, uh, so that's good. And you know, I just I think overall it goes to show RV manufacturers just didn't pull back fast enough. They just kept building and the inventories kept rising, and they should have been a little more disciplined. But I think in the good news of all this, it was just it was, it was a bad decision, I think, by a lot of RV manufacturers, in my opinion. The retail rates that we're at right now, it's a top ten year ever. It's not bad, you know, if you think about the length of this RV industry. So once everything right sizes. I think it's at a very good level for the RV industry to do just fine. And the demographics, which I'll, I'll share with you, continue to, uh, to be very positive. So how did Airstream fare uh, through all this? So we, as I mentioned, we didn't have any downtime at the factory. So here's, I'll give you an example of what we did. So we launched Rangeline, a new B van. It's, it's in, the, uh, uh, in the display. At the same time, um, you know, we noticed base camp was slowing down. So what we did is we took people who were working in base camp, we moved them over to range line. So we built less base camps to match to our retails and obviously ramp up with range line because dealers needed that. Same thing with interstate and, and Atlas. We were like, hey, we need to take a little off the top here to match our retail rates. Travel trailers were still ramping up. So we took some folks over in, in that uh, plan, moved them over to travel trailers where we needed them. And we adjusted our rates to what the retail market was asking from us but it was all behind the scenes, kind of moving some knobs and training some folks. 
Um, and we were able to kind of skate right, right through that. What we focus on is retail. In fact, all of our uh, reps, they don't have wholesale targets. And a lot of our, my sister companies look at me like, that's crazy. But uh, my, my opinion is, is we need to align with dealers and make sure that they sell. So they all have retail targets. And that's all we track every week. Our, our GMs, Brian and his counterpart, Tim Garner over at Touring Coach, all we're looking at is retails. Because we know if the retail happens, the wholesale will follow. We want the retail rates to be strong. And how do you impact retail? You, you train your salespeople, you make sure they got the right product, you make sure that, um, you know, that, that everything's in alignment on our, across our model lineup, we got the right floor plans. So that's something that we really, really watch. And I'm happy to report, we're getting, because the rest of the industry is going down, and we're able to maintain, we're gaining market share in each category um, right now that we compete in. So, uh, so we're really excited about that. And I would say that our dealer inventory is stabilizing. Not that it's coming down, it's finally getting to a point where they have inventory. Uh, last year in Maine, um, our dealers were just screaming for inventory. Our optimal inventory, I mean, we, we want anywhere from about right around 3,500 units in stock. I think last year in Maine, we were sitting at less than 500 units in stock across North America. Now we're about halfway there, getting a little closer. So it's, um, it's, it's much more uh, stabilized for us. Now you can actually go to a dealer and see units and actually buy one and take it home, which is great. Um, but we really wanna, we, we like to be very conservative with those dealer inventories. So that's kind of the state of the business. I would say that I'm cautiously optimistic as we move forward. As I mentioned, the demographics look great. I'll talk about that here in a second. We're balancing our inventory. We've got great products coming. We've got some stuff in the, in the works that I think everybody will be excited about. Um, and, uh, and we're really balancing that dealer inventory. So on Airstream, um, as just a reminder, I shared this uh, with those of you that were in Maine last year, but our mission statement might sound familiar to you, but it's to open a whole world of new experiences, a new dimension in enjoyment or travel adventure and good fellowship are your constant companions. That was Wally Bryant. That was part of his creed. And when the executive team, we met off-site, we were like, this has to be our mission. This is poetry. If you read that creed, it's incredible what that man's vision was for Airstream. You don't even hear RVs in that mission, right? But what you each are doing this week, hopefully, with the fellowship you have here, is what we're able to provide through these little silver travel trailers and, and obviously these little motorhomes. So that's our mission. Our vision um, is to build high-quality products that inspire the courage to be adventurous. After driving through the mountains to get here, each of you were very adventurous getting here. <laughs> so hopefully we inspired you a little bit to do that. I think it's a good sign that might be working. And then our core values as a company, we have four of them, but one is excellence. We want excellence in everything we do. We want a venturesome spirit. That's a Wally word. It's what he talked about a lot. But we really want our associates to have a venturesome spirit. We want integrity, that's critical for Airstream. It's critical for our relationship with dealers and our customers. And then uh, goodwill. And you know, that was a big part of Wally's vision too, to spread goodwill across uh, uh, the world, really. I mean, Wally was doing it everywhere. So, uh, so those are our core values. And we actually take these core values and we have core components of what we think that makes it up. And on our uh, performance reviews every year, we review every associate Airstream against those core values to make sure everybody's in alignment uh, with that. So I wanna kinda also update you on the COVID challenges. Last year I shared with you, these are kinda the three uh, big challenges that we had. Uh, the first was uh, material supply, um, supply chain challenges. You heard a lot of it during COVID. Where are we now? Where are we today? I can say that it, it's significantly improved. Um, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's, it, we're back to pre-COVID um, levels. And, um, and that's good. Before it was very disruptive when, you know, you're building a trailer and a refrigerator didn't make it on time. So you'd have to continue to build that trailer without the refrigerator in and come back and install that refrigerator later as an example. That's very disruptive. It's now out of station, but we were trying to manage our production while not sending people home. You don't want to send people home and not work. So we were trying to manage the short supplies of, 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 of goods and, and, and that is largely gone. We, we don't have that as much. We, we still have a thing or two, but it's, it's much better. And the manpower was a problem that I shared with you last year. 
So I can say that attrition has really improved. You know, I, I don't, for those of you who are retired and you were in business many years, I can tell you it's insane the, what the past couple years was like trying to manage. I mean, people, manufacturers in, uh, that we compete with, Honda um, and uh, Crown, which builds lift trucks and all the plastic pack, all these people that we compete with on a daily basis, increasing wages, increasing benefits, um, restoring their, um, um, basically all of their, like if you left Honda and then you lost all of, you know, if you, if you had five years of service, they would give that right back to you like you never left. They would call and get them back. So it was just stuff we hadn't seen before. That slowed down, it's still, but it's still incredibly competitive and labor costs are still very high. Uh, and, and really needs to be with the inflation that we've experienced. But I would say overall, it's in a better spot, um, and we're seeing attrition slow down uh, quite a bit. Not quite as low as pre-COVID, but, but way uh, much better. And then inflation, we've actually, for the past three, we, we had to start doing pricing every quarter because of inflation. For three quarters in a row, we have not had to increase prices. So fingers crossed that continues. So that's great. That means that really inflation is stabilized, at least from our perspective with supply chain. What we haven't started to see is deflation, which we're all kind of talking about it internally. What does that look like when it starts to happen, when prices start to go down? Hopefully it happens. Uh, we aren't seeing that right now, but boy, it sure is nice to level off because it was going up so fast there for so long. So that's well, I hope you enjoyed that first half of Justin's uh, keynote speech. As you, can as you heard, the RV industry kind of got caught by surprise with the downturn last year and ended up with too many RVs on the lot. But fortunately, Airstream was uh, dealing with it a little bit differently um, and they didn't ramp up as fast and they haven't had to ramp down as quickly. They're still keeping up with demand. So that's awesome. So now, make sure you watch the second half. That's going to be posted next. And there should be a link here or you'll find it. Maybe YouTube will even suggest it. So in the meantime, Make sure to hit that button to subscribe make, and click on for notifications. Leave us a comment if you like this video or if you have any thoughts. And give us a thumbs up too. Until the next time, we'll see you down the road.